It was a lackluster day for trade on the Indian indices. Hello and welcome to Roomba Quint Market Wrap. And just uh, let's start by looking at the intraday chart of Nifty. Despite opening 0.6% higher, the Nifty index couldn't hold on to its gains and ended about uh, 10 odd points higher at 9438. Uh, so, despite opening closer to that 9500 level, the highest that it went to, uh, intraday was 9498. Um, but when it comes to uh, a market guess, we are being joined by Mr. Hemin Kapadi, the senior, senior VP at Institutional Equity, KR Choksi Securities. Thank you for joining us, Hemin. Hemin, uh, what's your outlook on the Nifty? Key levels that you're watching? I think 9505 is a high which we need to take out. We're tired. I think hope we don't take that out for a few days, consolidate it some more. 9367 was the previous high, Shraddha. I think if we hold above that in this time period, I think that would be that much more better. Earlier the range was between 8976 to 9250 odd. I think now 9367 is a support and as long as that holds, I think this is a welcome cool off just before the expiry. Alright, Agam, uh, just like he said, we are seeing stronger support building at the 9300 level now. Absolutely, and uh, based on the maximum open interest, uh, that's the same data that's that's being available here. Uh, on the upside, of course, uh, Max OI is going to change because it's between 9,500 and 9,600 with respect to what's really happening in the futures market as well. As one may expect, you're looking at unwinding in the May futures, but this is mostly on account of ex ex expiry and the expiration week. Of course, we're waiting for the final numbers to come in the power copy in the evening, which will give us a better idea of what the rollovers stand. But on the whole, uh, well, at least rollovers until yesterday uh, weren't up to the mark, but uh, it's, we're still far, but good three sessions away from expiry, so a lot will come come off that. But that said, uh, you're also witnessing uh, a lot of movement in the, the, the banking space. Absolutely, Agam, we are. Uh, but before that, let's just talk about the nifty movers because um, we need to address uh, ITC, which is clearly the undisputed stock of the day, uh, rose as much as 6% today. That's ITC. And even HUL was sitting on gains of about 1%, but uh, the removal of GST overhang, uh, analysts believe, could lead to some re-rating there. So it's the second consecutive session when you're seeing big moves on uh, ITC, of course, now at record high. Um, Himin, I believe you have a call on ITC. A four-month sideways moment, Shraddha, and now we finally broken out. I guess Lever took the lead and ITC decided to follow suit. Posted a fresh all-time high, closed at a fresh all-time high. No known resistance levels. I'm not saying the 6% will be followed by another 6%, but uh, we are in a mature doctrine. We probably have been Shadda for the last 20-25 uh, years or so, and we continue further. So with corrections, I think a further up upside seems like a cinch. Okay, uh, so even as uh, FMCG stocks were doing well, it was pharma and uh, the state banks which were actually state-owned banks which were actually dragging the index lower SBI. Uh, saw losses of as much as 4.5%. Bank of Baroda also uh, gave up uh, nearly 3%. Cement stocks were also trading weaker. So whether you have um, Ambuja Cements or ACC, all of them in the red. But when it comes to banks uh, specifically, um, you, the, the entire PSU bank index tank, tank today, it fell as much as 4%. That's the biggest drop in nearly uh, 6 months. What uh, what went wrong there? Well, it could be two things. We had Bank of India numbers which had come out. It posted a loss of 1,045 crores, whereas uh, the projections were somewhere around um, a, a loss of 45 crores or so. So, Bank of India slipped as much as 21% after it went back into the red after two quarters of uh, profits. Gross NPA numbers were stable on a sequential basis, but slippage is more than double on a quarter on quarter basis. But the most important um, disclosure was the fact that they said that they have paid the coupon payments on their additional tier 1 bonds by debiting their reserve uh, revenue reserves, which actually means that there was some issue with respect to uh, payment of uh, interest. That apart, uh, when it comes to SBI, while well, most of the brokerages have retained their view and even uh, hiked target prices uh, after uh, the bank reported better than expected uh, numbers on Friday, it's the worries over SBI's bottom line uh, hit coming due to the merger of associate banks, which has actually spooked that stock. Uh, so if you look at um, 
uh, SBI's uh, consolidated Q4 uh, numbers are actually a net loss coming in there. The merger with associate banks, of course, will become effective only on 1st April. Again, Morgan Stanley increased the target price by 32%, but then they said that the bulk of that hike in the target price is only because of a better performance in its non-banking subsidiaries like its cards business and insurance business. Um, mean coming back to you, where do you see the ne uh, Nifty bank Nifty headed? I think it's been more structured, uh, Shraddha, there is a roughly a short term 400 point range, a slightly maybe a weekly point of view 600 point range. High beta but currently that's also stagnating, I think it's going nowhere so and with the expiry I don't think it's going anywhere. Only if 22.6, 24, 22.400 is the range if that breaks on the downside in the near term, uh, Shraddha, I think that would be concern otherwise we're stable and uh, going nowhere, at least in the very near term. All right, so turning focus to mid-caps now, um, airline stocks uh, saw a big knock on account of the rising crude prices. Yes, it did. Uh, and, uh, you know, once again, a little bit of continuation of what we saw on Friday. Uh, we're looking at nearly, you know, nearly two gainers for as many as five, uh, five I'm, I'm sorry, nearly two losers, two gainers for nearly five uh, uh, losers. So we have Videocon Industry, Bank of India, Kaplan Point, as well as VR and Logistics all losing well over 8% in today's job trade. This is followed by Jet Airways and Jet Prakash Associates. Uh, Gujarat State Fertilizers also taking a knock of as much as 6%. But with respect to gainers, we have Future Retail up as much as 9.3%, followed by United Spirits also gaining 7.3%. We had gains from Gulf Isle, Relaxo Footwear, as well as Karoo Vesia Bank all gaining 3 to 4%. But, uh, you know, again, coming down to, well, a re relatively larger cap stock, Glenmark. Uh, it's closed at 669 right now. We're expecting a little bit of a recovery there? Yes, Agam. I think the short term picture is oversold. I think around 660 uh, is a monthly congestion support area. Right. Uh, if you look at the intraday charts, uh, the early MACD is turning a bit positive. And uh, we've been down very sharply. Support area, oversold situation. First technical green shoots are currently on the intraday chart. So I'd say it is more of a bounce, a recovery, not a rally. But looking at the quantum of the fall, Agam, I have a feeling that this should give you a decent 30 or a 35 percent, uh, 30 or 35 point, not percent, right. jump in the next uh, 4 to 5 trading sessions. And Jubilant Food works at 1022. What is your call? Uh, the, technically, the breakout comes in at 1037, 1040, uh, Agam. So I'm sort of anticipating a breakout. Okay. Uh, we've had a move, we've had a time price retracement. It hasn't gone down much vis-a-vis -vis okay. the time taken. So one would assume that the outlook is positive. Some of the weekly mechanical indicators are in buy mode, indicating that we are in an uptrend. So anticipating an upward breakout, I'd say uh, the, the breakout comes in at 1037, 1040, but we can look at something around 1070. So downside up is limited, maybe a 15 or a 17 point uh, stop loss. Okay. And the upside, we could see some around 40, 45 to 40, 50 rupees. Right. There you have it. You can keep an eye on Glenmark as well as Jubilant Foodworks in the mid caps. And uh, overall, well, it's been a very quiet day of trade and we're going to keep on keep an eye on plenty more earnings this coming this week. But that is all that we have for uh, what, we, what we've seen in today's year of trade. Uh, Himein, once again, thank you for thank joining you for us. Thank you for having me. And as for you guys, we'll see you once again tomorrow on The Market Trap. Till then, it's goodbye.